Hi, this is Datu Fast here. In this video, I will show you this very nice car dash camera by a company called KNF Concept. This dash cam has a high end Amberella chipset. It also has a built in GPS module to precisely record your vehicle location, speed, and route. Before I go any further with all the features, and this camera does have a lot of features, let me open this up so you can see what this camera looks like. Here we have the user manual. This is the dash cam. Here we have the USB cable and it has a mini USB connector. This is the windshield suction cup mount. Here we have the cigarette lighter power cable. This is a software disk. It also comes with a 30 millimeter circular polarizer filter to help reduce glare. Here's a look at all the parts you get with this dash cam. Let's have a closer look at this dash cam. As I mentioned earlier, it uses a high-end Umbrella chipset OV4689. It also has a wide dynamic range to give you a full balance exposure during nighttime or daytime. The lens is a 170 degree wide angle lens with six layers of glass. The aperture is f2.9 which is great for low light nighttime recording. On the right side here we have the speaker. Below the speaker we have the reset button. On the right we have the up selection button and the down selection button. Over here on the left side this is the micro SD card slot and this camera supports up to 64 gig memory size. On the top of the camera this is the record or photo shutter button. Here is the mode button. In the middle this is where you connect to the windshield mount. This is the power button and this is the menu or delete button. On the bottom of the camera we have the microphone, HDMI out and the USB connector. The back has a 2.7 inch 16 by 9 TFT LCD display. Inside there is a rechargeable 320 milliamp hour 3.7 volt polymer lithium ion battery. The included 30 millimeter circular polarizer filter will help reduce reflection and glare and let me show you how to install this. What you want to do is thread the filter onto the dash cam. By rotating the polarizer you can selectively block out reflected lights. Now you don't have to use this polarizer if you don't want to, but I just want to show you how it's installed. On the windshield suction mount you'll see the GPS module is actually integrated with this mount here and on the top of the GPS module this is where you plug the power plug with the mini USB connector. To connect this mount to the camera, what you want to do is slide the top of the camera onto the mounts with the contacts and it'll snap in place. Here we have a ball joint which you can adjust the angle. Here I have a 32 gig micro SD card and to install it just insert it into this side memory card slot. I'm also going to remove this protective plastic on the screen. Now let's power the unit on. Once the unit is turned on, the recording will start automatically. If you want to stop the recording, press the OK button right here. And then the recording will stop. If you want to turn off the camera manually, press the power button here. To turn it back on, press the power button. If you stop the recording and then press the mode button here, you toggle between video mode, picture taking mode, playback mode, 
I'm back to video mode. While the camera is recording, if you press the mode button, it will lock that video clip that you're currently recording. And you can see the lock icon here on the screen. And you can use that when you see something interesting on the road while you're driving. On the LCD screen, the top left hand corner will show you the resolution it's recording in. In the middle, this is the time elapsed of the current video clip that's recording. Top right hand corner, this is the battery charging status. Over here on the left side, we have the GPS icon. The loop recording is enabled. Below that, that's the microphone is enabled. And the last icon here is the memory card is installed. If you press the menu button right here, you go into the configuration of this unit. The first one is resolution. Press the OK button to enter. On the left, we have the up and down selection button. This will allow you to change the setting. Right now, it's set to 2560 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. This is the wide full HD resolution. Press down. The next one is 2304 by 1296 at 30 frames per second. And this one is super high definition resolution. Next one down, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. This one is Full HD. Next one is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. HDR is high dynamic range. 1280 by 720 at 60 frames per second. This one is at 30 frames per second. Now we're back to the first one. Press OK to select it. Next one down is video quality. Video quality is super fine, fine, normal, and back to super fine. Record overwrite is one minute. Motion detection, default is off. You can turn it on if you want to. Power on record. So if you want the record to turn on automatically once the unit is powered on, turn this on. Power off delay. So when you power it off, the delay time is 30 seconds. That's default. Power on delay, it's off. Mic for the microphone, default's on. Time lapse is off. Language selection. Car number set. Car number set, I believe this one is to allow you to set a specific number for each camera if you have more than one for different vehicles. TV type, NTSC or PAL, auto power off. So if the camera is powered on but it's not recording, it will turn off automatically. Auto LCD off. If you want the LCD to turn off while the unit is still running, you can set the time for this. Time setup. Here you can change the time. Stamp. This is a timestamp. So if you want to add a timestamp to the video, you can do that. Deep sound, you can change the volume level. Flicker, this is for the frequency of the video, 60 hertz or 50 hertz. Auto. Contrast. Sharpness, hard, soft, standard. White balance, auto. EV setting, this is the exposure value setting. You can basically increase the exposure or decrease it. G sensor set, default is off, I'm going to turn it on and you'll notice that there is a value of 1 to 7, 1 being the lowest sensitivity and 7 is the highest sensitivity. So if you get into an accident and your car is subjected to a certain amount of g-force, the video clip will be locked automatically. I'm going to set this to 5. GPS auto update time, it's on. GMT setup, that's for time. GPS setup is on. Y dynamic range is on. Lane departure warning system detect is off. Let me turn that on. Lane departure warning system calibration. No. We can select yes to calibrate it. Default setting. You can change the camera setting back to default. 
format is to format the micro SD card firmware version. This one is 160105.v1.1. Now we're back to the resolution menu. To exit, press the menu button again. Now you're back to the video record mode. So let me show you how to do the lane departure warning system calibration. And in this setup menu, you see the LDWS calibration. Press OK. Now we'll scroll up to select yes. Press OK again. Now I'm going to press the menu button to exit. Back on the main video record screen, now you'll see two lines on the screen. One is a purple line at the top and a red line at the bottom. What you need to do is move that purple line down to the horizon of the road and move the red line to the front of your hood. To do that, push the up and down arrow button on the side. So the purple line is set now. To toggle over to the red line, press the menu button. Now we'll move the red line down to the front of the hood. Once that's set, go ahead and press the OK button. Now the calibration is complete. When you turn on the lane departure warning system, the forward collision warning system will also be enabled. You cannot selectively only turn on one. So if you turn off the lane departure warning system, then the forward collision warning system will also be turned off. The power wire they included is 11 and a half feet long, which is very good because there's plenty of length for you to route the wire from the headliner to the A-pillar down to your dash and plug it into your cigarette lighter plug. On the cigarette lighter plug, if you flip this cover, it actually has a USB charging port. Very nice design. To install the camera on the windshield, place a suction cup on the windshield. Now turn the center knob with the GPS module clockwise until it locks into place. Pull out the weather stripping and carefully tuck the power wire behind the A-pillar trim piece. Route your power wire along the headliner and then plug the power wire to the GPS module. As you can see, the Ford collision warning system is falsing quite a bit. With the lane departure warning system, it doesn't seem to go off when it needs to. And with the forward collision warning system, it seems to false quite a bit. So both systems are uh, not very reliable. And you may want to turn off this feature in the dash cam.
On the CD that came with the dash cam, there is a software that will allow you to play recorded video clips from your dash cam. And here I've copied one of the video clips onto my PC and I open up this player and you're watching one of the video clips that's being played. You'll notice on the right side there is a Google map that will show you the route that you're traveling on. At the bottom you have the speed and also the direction that you're traveling at. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this review of the KNF Concept Super HD Car Dash Cam. And as you can see, the video quality is great for both daytime and nighttime recording. The GPS data logging works very well. If you play back the video clip in the player that comes with the software, you can see your route in Google Map along with the speed that you're driving at. As for the lane departure warning system and the forward collision warning system, it can be a hit and miss. But as I mentioned, you do have the option to disable that feature if you don't like it. Overall, this is a very good dash cam with very good build quality. And if you want to check out this product, I will put the Amazon link in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section. And don't forget to click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.